postcards were the first form of popular photographic illustration. In the days before newspapers had pictures, the postcard was the way you got to see what famous people looked like, what the events you'd heard about looked like, as they happened. This is the coronation of 1911. This is the procession just in front of Buckingham Palace. I had a splendid view of it and saw the King and Queen very well. I left here at 4.30 a.m. and got to St. James's Palace by 5.30 and stood in the mall until the procession had gone past. I took a little camp stool with me and was very glad of it as I was waiting there five hours. This is a grand view with Mr. Rothschild's house right hand corner. Some of his decorations were real ermine, very costly. I'm expecting Lottie here next week by boat from Yarmouth. Love to all, Aunt Ivy. Dear Miss Mazel, I send you another view of the coronation festivities. Not as pretty as the last, but it gives a good idea of the crowd lining the streets while royalty was passing. By this time all the decorations and stands had been taken down, but with all the men refusing to work until they get better pay, London is almost as excited now as it was then, and it is feared our food will go up in price as it cannot be got in the markets and is getting scarce. It is a pity these things cannot be settled without so much suffering, especially to the poor. Dear Auntie, Arrived here safe on Saturday, went from Lincoln Station at 12 o'clock. Soldiers out for strikers, but no trouble at King's Cross. With love, Nelly. When the Titanic went down, there was a rush on postcards of the liner, so much so that her sister ship, Olympia, was passed off as the Titanic on many cards. I thought you might be interested in this. What an awful disaster. It is the one Dear topic Rosie, of conversation. You will see this is a photo of the big ship that went down. Don't know if oh you've seen it before. As you say in your letter, the Titanic is the most terrible affair. I think I must have known some of the crew. The First World War came at the height of postcard production and is documented in compelling detail in the pictures and the messages sent at the time. Postcard salesmen in France had a field day they could sell their patriotic cards or their stock landscapes to the soldiers who would write messages home in indelible pencil sharpened with a bayonet. Where they were in France wasn't always clear because the name was crossed out by the censor. As you see, I'm back again at the front, or rather somewhere in France. I'm in a town well away from the strafing. I'm all right, but the weather is awful. We are smothered in mud. I was out all day yesterday and didn't know it was Sunday until four o'clock. What a life! Dear Alice, the Germans have winged me again. This time I've got a bullet through my right knee. So sorry I haven't had time for a letter, but one will follow up. Went into trenches with Monday, plenty of mud. We are out again, but close behind. I asked you a question in my last letter. Let me have an answer. Dear P, just a card. I don't know whether you have heard young Flo's husband is killed. There seems no end of it, one thing after another for them. Ever yours, B. Back in Britain, life wasn't easy either. There was a new threat, war from the air, zeppelins dropping bombs. Hope all's well with you. I hate these air raids, the loss of life to innocent people and wounded. Bound to be more whilst this calm weather lasts. January 1936. I send this without comment. Don't show it to Derek, it might encourage him. Hitler was fond of postcards. They were a very good means of propaganda. And perhaps he was photographed more often than any person in history because he was followed by one man, Hoffman, who took photographs of him, whatever he did, wherever he went. For the Allies, he was more often the subject of caricature. The Americans were very fond of putting him down the lavatory pan or sticking him on lavatory paper. Also lavatorial, though the British recipient would never know, is this card of Winston Churchill and Hitler. Churchill is saying to Hitler in the other languages, I get the impression you've done it in your pants. Whereas the translation in English here is, and now little boy, it is time to pay. Dear folks, in this great hall I was given a fine free place near to Hitler. I was at first pleased with the man's serious bearing, but today, when I was again privileged to occupy a press seat, I was very disappointed in the content and meaning of his speech. 
as it was one long harangue of hatred against Jews in Russia. I also attended a display of Germany's new army, which I'm convinced is being prepared for war with Russia. I'm sorry to be of this opinion, because the German people are a very fine folk. Cheerio. Here's an innocent-looking card of the youth hostel at Bigbury on Sea, sent by a young man four days after the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Dear all, still okay but lacking cash owing to unforeseen train journey. Could you please send me two pound registered to YHA Crocombe? Good news read Japan an atomic bomb, what? An American corporal, Max Church, sent over 300 postcards during World War II from England, France, then Germany, back to his folks in Michigan. This is number 302, almost the last, sent on a Nazi propaganda postcard that he's picked up. This was sent two days after the bomb was dropped. 8th of August, 1945. Hello, Dad. I guess that bomb is quite a thing. It sets everyone to thinking. I had a fellow ask me today what I thought about it, and we had quite a talk. I mean about the second coming of Christ. It's easy to think that postcards only show cliched images these days, but in fact they can still be a great chronicler, as in the case of the Berlin Wall. Captured from every angle, it becomes the essential site of Berlin. Hello there. I'm just being a tourist for a change. The shops are good, but the weather, the wall and the soldiers are terrible. Traumatic journey. Plane struck by lightning as we took off. Safe, of course. Have a very full program here, but includes tourist bits. Coach tour yesterday, visit to East Berlin tomorrow. All very exhausting, but interesting. See you soon. What an exciting time to be in this city. Many problems, but incredibly dynamic. The wall is no more, except parts of it which artists are using to paint on, both east and west. Erica. The camera loved Lady Diana Spencer, and so did the postcard. And when she became Princess of Wales, she became one of the most popular themes of postcard production. Dear Bess, writing this, watching the wedding on TV. There is a party in the road later which we hope to join in. We are in London today. We were lucky to see Her Royal Highness and Lady Diana in real life on HMS Mercury on Saturday. But all this was to come to a sudden and well-reported end in the late summer of 1997. On this card, an American has written a diary of that strange week back to her friends in Brooklyn. 31st August 97. Woke today to unbelievable reports that Princess Diana dead. High speed chase at 120 miles per hour in middle of night, being pursued by flock of photographers. Grim. Thursday 4th September. Diana's saintly appreciations are getting out of hand. Tons of fresh flowers wrapped in plastic are rotting hip deep at Kensington Palace in Buckingham Castle. Saturday 6th September. Like all the sheep in Kensington Gardens but in privacy of TV room, we too watched for hours the procession and the service at Westminster Abbey. It was unbelievable. Dear Dad, maybe this could be the final image in the fairy tale picture book that tells the sad story of Princess Diana. I was more shocked than I would have imagined. Remember how I used to spend my pocket money on Charles and Di key rings at Jones the newsagent? Love, Zoe.